Good afternoon. What you're looking at here is a, uh, a neon bulb connected to the secondary of this tiny little uh, inductor. High voltage output secondary. The primary of this inductor is in parallel with a little grain of wheat incandescent bulb connected to the output of the circuit known as the less banky nano pulsar, except it isn't really a complete less banky nano pulsar because I don't have the apparently unobtainium uh, silicon carbide, or uh, I think it's silicon carbide thyristor. I just have the MOSFET. So what we essentially have here is a voltage controlled oscillator and a pulse shortening circuit that's going to a MOSFET driver chip that's driving a MOSFET with very short uh, pulses at a frequency of between about 2 kilohertz and about 280 kilohertz, something like that and uh, it's connected to a 12 volt power supply and there's its frequency control right there and I'll be leaving the duty cycle or pulse width set and varying the frequency control okay so it's at the lowest frequency now and as I start increasing the frequency, you can see that both the neon and the little grain of wheat incandescent bulb glow brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter, and brighter until I'm at the maximum frequency that the circuit produces, which is, oh, it's not quite 280, it looks like it's about 256 kilohertz, something like that, the top end. Okay, so I'm going to go back down now. So this is the minimum frequency of 2.2 kilohertz. And um, what I have over here is one of my Tesla bifiler pancake coils. This is the one with the three-turn primary on the outside, but it's not in use now. We're just looking at the Tesla bifiler itself. And I have a 100k resistor connected across that as a very light load and uh, the channel 1 or yellow scope probe connected across that resistor and on the banky circuit I have the blue probe connected to the MOSFET gate signal and the magenta probe connected to the uh, MOSFET drain, okay? Now what I'm going to do, this, so this little inductor here is what's being driven by the MOSFET. Uh, it's not connected directly to the bifurcate coil at all. So what I'm going to do now is just move this whole thing over so that that uh, little inductor is centered over the pancake coil, right in the center. And it looks like it's about, oh, five centimeters or so up uh, from the coil. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and go through the frequency again with the frequency control. Uh, oops. I see I blocked the view of the scope. Let me move this over just a little bit so that you can see the oscilloscope screen. So, uh, adjust the tripod a little bit here. So, blue is the uh, the MOSFET gate. Yellow is the response of the coil, and purple is the MOSFET drain. So you can see. Uh, over just a little bit here. 
you can see as the MOSFET gate goes high and then low again, the MOSFET drain goes low, turning the coil, uh, the little inductor on, and then when the uh, gate turns off, you get this spike, this inductive spike, uh, and that inductive spike is then stimulating, well, actually both edges of this on and off are stimulating the Tesla coil, Tesla by filer coil, to ring. And down here I have displayed the frequency of the ring, and up here I have displayed the frequency of the actual pulse to that little inductor. So now, as I go up in frequency, you can see that the uh, coil always has the same frequency, and it goes through these peaks, 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 and so forth. So what's happening is the pancake by filer Tesla coil is always responding at its own resonant frequency as the stimulating pulses go through the frequency range and when you get to even even harmonics that's where you see the peaks in the response so here we have one two three four full peaks the number up here the frequency of the blue pulse train is one quarter the resonant frequency of the coil the yellow frequency and as I keep going up, looking for another set of peaks right about there, now we have one, two, three, and this number up here is one third the value of this number down here, roughly speaking. And then here's another set, two, and again here we have one half what we have down here. And then finally we get to the, we're directly stimulating the, the coil at the true resonant frequency. And here's where we get the largest response peaks. And a one-to-one -one relationship between the stimulating pulses and the response of the coil. And I can't go higher. The same thing would continue to happen as I go higher in frequency, but with this particular setup, I can only go uh, a little bit over the actual 200, approximately 247 to 250 kilohertz resonance of the pancake coil. So going down, that was the first harmonic or fundamental. Here's the second subharmonic, the third subharmonic, the fourth subharmonic the fifth subharmonic, sixth, seventh, and so on. Okay, thank you for watching.